Hi, it's Daniela at California Carnivores, and a lot of you have been asking, what is the bare root fridge method for providing winter dormancy and how do I do it? So I've got some plants, I'm gonna show you how to do it, and we're gonna talk about what it is in this video. So, first of all, this is our glamorous bare rooting station here at the nursery. Very exciting. So temperate plants like Saracenia and Venus flytraps go dormant for the winter and they require that winter dormancy. And during that time, they're going to die back. You can see this picture has gone brown. These traps have started to die back. This is all normal and exposure to the colder temperatures and the shorter photo periods in winter trigger this dormancy. And it's really essential for the plant. So it's important to provide this for them. So if you live in an area where it either gets too cold for the plants or it never gets cold enough for the plants to have that winter dormancy, you can do the bare root fridge method. So let's walk, walk through that now. So first of all, keep your tags, put them to the side. And it's a really simple method where you really are just going to bare root it. And that means taking the soil off, leaving just the roots. So what I like to do, squeeze the sides of the pots and it usually comes out just like this. And then you can work a lot of the soil away. You do wanna be careful because you don't wanna break off any of these roots. They worked really hard to make these roots. They love these roots, so you should be gentle. So the way that I get these clean is with a hose, usually on jet setting, which seems counterintuitive to being gentle, but honestly, it's a lot more gentle than pulling the dirt off with my hands. You can see we're already cleaning up those roots beautifully. Look at that. I like to get a lot of the dirt off the crown very gently. I don't want to break anything important in there. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to put these into the refrigerator to expose it to cooler temperatures. We really want these roots to be clean. We want the plant to be clean during that period because you don't want anything that could encourage rot or mold or any fungal growth. So that's why we're trying to get all of this soil and stuff away from the roots and the crown. So this is actually looking pretty good. Just gonna give it one more rinse. Oops, that's a little hard. <laughs> And then the last step for this particular guy is I'm just going to cut off the pictures that are actually brown. So these pictures are beautiful and healthy. I'm going to leave them on. No need to cut them off. But these brown pictures, I'm just going to cut off close to the plant. So here we go. Got my beautiful roots. This is the rhizome itself, right? That's where all the healthy, lovely part of the plant is. And now I'm going to wrap these roots and a little bit of damp sphagnum moss. You can use, we prefer New Zealand sphagnum moss, but there's a shortage of that. So you can actually use the domestic sphagnum moss. You can usually find that at big box hardware stores. Um, so you can see this is it. I've had it sitting in water and I'm squeezing that water out so that it's damp, but not soaking wet. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna keep the roots nice and, and wet, but not sopping wet. Now I'm going to take a resealable plastic bag, put this, and most importantly, the tag, <laughs> as I've learned from bitter experience, and seal this guy up. So this can go into the refrigerator. Just put it in the back, somewhere that like your spouse is not going to think you're insane when they pull it out when they're trying to eat lunch. And then you want to check on it. Check on it every couple weeks, every month, just to make sure that it's not you know, growing any mildew or fungus or anything. And also to make sure that this is still a little bit damp and you can always mist it if you feel like it's drying out. So I'll go through the same process with the Venus flytrap just so you kind of see how that looks. Because while it's still a rhizome, sometimes people feel a little overwhelmed by that. So here's my flytrap. You can see a lot of these have died back. I'll just pull a couple of those off, but there's really no need to cut these back. So again, I just squeeze the sides of the pot then I'm gonna gently pull these away. And like magic, the rhizome, these are really easy. So here's what I've got, I'm gonna clean them off. You can see 
very different roots actually than we saw in the Saracenia. We really want to preserve those. So I'm just gonna rinse. Give that little rhizome, little rinse. And honestly, these are really fast and easy as you can see. Right there is the life of the plant, that rhizome right there. I'm not gonna cut anything else off on this. Same thing, I've got my sphagnum, squeezing it. Then I'm just gonna wrap the roots and the plant into it. Add a resealable plastic bag. Tuck it into the corner, along with the tag. Seal it up, ready to go in the fridge. So when do you put it in the fridge? Basically, you can do that around Halloween or if the temperatures in your area are dropping, you know, into the 20s. They can survive a brief freeze, but that's a really good sign that it's time to put them in. Now, if your temperatures don't ever really drop below 20, you can just leave them outside. If your temperatures never drop below 50, they have to go into the fridge to experience that cold. And I am talking Fahrenheit and not Celsius. And then to bring them out of the fridge, that's really temperature dependent in your area as well. So as soon as your nights get over 32 degrees pretty consistently, you can pop them up and put them back outside. So that's the bare root fridge method. I hope that was helpful and enjoy. And then let me know if you have any more questions. And if you have a lot of questions, we have a really long video all about temperate dormancy. Uh, so check that out too. We'll put a link in the, the comment section below.